Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys uh, checking today's video out. Always grateful for that. And guys, today we're gonna be talking about Bass Pro Shops. Um, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on Bass Pro Shops. Um, I really like to hear your guys' opinion after I get done with this. Um, they are no doubt uh, a powerhouse in this industry, probably the most recognizable name. And I think it's a conversation worth having in today's video. Um, also, guys, for get started, just wanted to give you guys the daily thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody that's been supporting and helping Intuitive Angling here by using all the links I put in the description. Um, if you're a viewer out there that wants to support Intuitive Angling and help it out, the best thing you can do is just to go into at the link of my description in every video and use and bookmark my Tackle Warehouse link to purchase your tackle. That's the best way you can support the channel along with subscribing. So thank you very much for everybody that's doing that. Okay, Bass Pro Shop, man. It's like, you know, some people love them. Some people hate them. Some people are neutral with that. Um, give you get a little background here. Um, I was born and raised in Joplin, Missouri, which is about an hour west of Springfield here where the Bass Pro Shop National Headquarters was. And I remember back when I was like a senior in high school driving up here to Springfield, Missouri, to go to the Bass Pro Shops. But back then, the Bass Pro Shops, it was nothing like it is right now. If you guys have ever been to Bass Pro in Springfield, Missouri, it's this incredible facility there. But back then, it was in the same spot, but all it was, it was like a little strip mall there. And there was like a, maybe a little Bass Pro Shop sign on it, but it looked just like a strip mall where there'd be a laundromat or something. And all it was, was a catalog store. So you went in there and they had big bass pro shop catalogs everywhere and you ordered everything out of the catalog they didn't have any there was no you know products there it's all catalog sales that's the first that i was ever around bass pro shops and then also there was um, um when i lived in joplin i was friends with a, a person named bob bob benatendi who was a buyer for brass pro shops and he was also a good friend of johnny morris's so i knew bob and his wife um you know for years and they would, Bob would drive back and forth from Joplin to work at Bass Pro Shops. So I got real familiar with Bass Pro Shops then. And then also I was, I was, you know, friends with people that were sort of part of the organization. I remember Stacy King and I used to travel together back in the old Redman days. And I remember, I remember the very first time Stacy got into a Bass Pro Shop, a tracker fiberglass boat, a Bass Tracker fiberglass. And I remember seeing this thing. It was like nothing like you'd see now. So. I've seen the evolution of Bass Pro Shops over the year, over the years, and um, probably one of the highlights of my whole fishing careers um, back in the 90s. I won Bass Pro Shop. They used to conduct a national casting competition where all the professional anglers in the country and everybody that was the expert caster entered this big competition there at the Bass Pro Shop, and and I, I won that. I got first place in the casting competition. And Johnny Morris invited me into his office and gave me a ten thousand dollar check for winning the competition. And you know, just to be in Johnny Morris's office. And this was back in the '90s, so it was even a lot smaller than it is now. But he was super cordial, super nice, super down to earth. So, anyway, are they good or bad for the sport? Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, one of the, the thing that I appreciate more than anything about Bass Pro Shops, what they've done, anything else is how Johnny Morris has brought conservation into focus. I mean, you, nobody can deny that. It's like Johnny Morris has spent untold millions of dollars on different conservation efforts. And he's also, one of the things that I really like about it is the, the Missouri Ozarks here, the White River Chain of Lakes, there's an energy and a vibe to the White River Chain of Lakes. You Bull Shoals, Tabor Rock, Beaver Lake, Tanny Como, all those type of lakes. Uh, there's an energy to that and a tradition to that, that Johnny has really embraced and he's brought that into Bass Pro Shop um, in every aspect of it, whether it's Bass Pro or Big Seed or whatever. And remember guys, I don't have anything to do with Bass Pro. I don't have any relationship with them. I don't have any any deals with them. I'm just a, an observer like you guys here. So I don't have any bias one way or the other with it. But, but bringing that, the energy of the Ozarks into national attention throughout, you know, every store across the country. I've really appreciated that. Now, there's a lot of people out there, they've been a very successful business. That comes with controversy as far as, you know, you know, being able to monopolize the sport to some extent. But from from what I have seen, it seems like they've been fairly responsible with that. I mean, I, 
Everybody that I've ever had contact with within Bass Pro have been exemplary people. I've known a lot of people that have worked for the organization within the management capacity of it. And there's a lot of good people there. And, you know, for, so from that standpoint, it's, it's in good hands with it. But, um, I, you know, the, the organization in Bass Pro Shop has grown so massive. And it's like if you're here in Springfield, Missouri, and you've seen, you know, the, the the footprint that they have in Springfield, Missouri, it is just unbelievable that bass fishing has got to that point. And one of the things that Johnny Morris has done is he's really helped mainstream the entire, you know, art and the entire topic of bass fishing. I mean, he's he's brought in celebrities, sports celebrities, entertainment celebrities to incorporate within Bass Pro Shop. You know, he's brought NASCAR into it, golf. Um, his entire thing about the, the Native American heritage here in Missouri, he's got a museum there at the Big Cedar Lodge, you know, dedicated to the Native American, you know, tradition and heritage here in, in Missouri. It's just a, just a lot of cool stuff that he puts behind it. But um, a lot of controversy to it. I mean, you know, everybody knows like Bass Pro Shop's got a big private label type organization. You know, they purchased a lot of different boat companies and they've caused a little bit of controversy with the, you know, buying Ranger boats and, you know, Triton and all the other type of stuff. I guess that's just, that's just part of business. I mean, I don't have one feeling one way or the other on that. But the main thing, guys, is like, you know, I guess one of the things that I would say about this is, is any time that you're successful, like Johnny Morris has been with Bass Pro Shop, you're going to be open to criticism. But from my perspective, from a professional bass angler and an environmentalist, a conservationist, somebody who has a, a, a real interest in the sport, I, ha I don't see anything, or I don't have anything except good things to say about Bass Pro Shop. I mean, like I said, you, if you ever put yourself out there and you have an opinion on anything, you're going to be open to criticism. I get that. I'm part of that myself. But um, I just, I think that what they brought to this sport has been positive all the way around. And um, if I could say one thing to Bass Pro Shop that I would encourage with their powerhouse is to get behind the uh, anti-forward facing sonar movement that I've sort of spearheaded here. I think as far as the long-term sustainability of the sport, um, if if Bass Pro Shop could come out against that, even though I'm sure they make millions of dollars selling forward-facing sonar equipment throughout the country, if they would sort of take a hit in that area and, uh, you know, get behind this thing about, you know, maintaining the tradition and the heritage of the sport, then that would go a long way to accomplishing some good things. And one final thing that I would say with that is, um, is, since Bass Pro Shop and Johnny Morris are really big in conservation efforts with that, I think one of the biggest things that we have to maintain here is, is our wild places around the lakes, our, our rivers and streams and wild places out there, you know, they have the ability to influence legislation to some extent or, uh, you know, sort of push it in the right direction. And the more that they push for the environmental sustainability and protection of our wild areas, in and around the lakes, rivers, streams across the country, that to me is probably the most important mark that they can that they can leave. Because, in order to make positive change in the United States of America, you can only do that through legislation. It's like, unfortunately, that's the reality of the situation, and legislation is influenced by money for the most part. You can have public opposition and public support behind certain initiatives, but that's still. A lot of people don't do the right thing, even if the public is against something or for something. It's only money and power that affects legislation that can affect things negatively or positively in the future. And hopefully um, they will use that responsibly and continue to uh, ensure the environmental sustainability of, of everything that the sport revolves around. Because if we don't have a vibrant, healthy environment, Bass Pro Shop goes out of business because their very plain field is relying upon that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, I just wanted to throw that up there because I live here in Springfield, Missouri now. I drive past Bass Pro Shop every single day. I see it every single day. And um, it, it's, a, it's such a big part of our industry that I think that it's hard to have a conversation on fishing without talking about it occasionally. So see you guys later.